What's up, everybody? I'm Noah from PhoneDog.com. There it is. It's the T-Mobile G1 with Google, the first Android phone to be released. It's made by HTC. It's carried by T-Mobile. You don't want to see me, you want to see the phone. It's carried by T-Mobile. It's got Google software on it. And uh, here it is. We've got a whole bunch of coverage on this device up for you. I've had it for a little less than a week now. And uh, I've been putting it through its paces. So we've got a multi-part video review. This part is kind of the, the summary the kind of overall, you know, review. And then we've broken it down. There are videos on, uh, we'll be adding more all the time, I'm sure. But there are, at this point, videos on uh, the web experience, on messaging, so email and IM and MMS and that kind of stuff. Uh, there's a video on multimedia on the phone, so music and the Amazon Music Store and uh, photos and the camera and video playback and that kind of stuff. Uh, there's a video on just how the phone works as a phone. You know, we overlook that stuff. These things do so many things. But so all kinds of stuff uh, about the phone. But if you just want to get what I think of the thing, you're in the right place. Two words. Game changer. Yeah. Um, I've had the phone for a week, and, and I'll tell you this right now. It's big. It's kind of ugly. It's heavy. It's clunky. The, uh, the keyboard is too flush mounted. The, the Action on the keys is a little funny, not nearly as good, in my opinion, as other HTC devices recently. Uh, the, the bent chin here thing, I know, you know, it helps when you're holding it to your mouth, but it looks kind of funny. It's definitely heavier in the pocket, thicker in the pocket, you know, the list goes on and on, but it's still awesome. I, I can't, I, you know, I, I, I get shallow and vain about these things. I want my phone to be thin, I want it to be sexy, I want it to be exactly what I want it to be. I want a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack on this thing. There isn't one, there's just a USB. There's no stereo Bluetooth out of the box. All this stuff, it's still just so fun to play with and I'm so enamored of it. And uh, game changer, this is why. Two reasons, most of all. The screen and Android. HTC did a great job with the touch screen. Um, it's in a class with iPhone. It's not a multi-touch screen. Uh, it's just a single touch, but it works really well for, you know, all the stuff you do. The flicking works well. Um, it's, you know, it responds to uh, the, the conductivity of your finger or whatever the technical business is. It's capacitive, not resistive. So uh, it just doesn't have that membrane that a lot of touchscreen phones have, you know. It, it just feels solid, kind of, you know, iPhone-esque. Um, and it just works really well. Um, and Android is just, it's terrific. I mean, I'm just, I'm really impressed with how user-friendly and how smooth it is. I wasn't really expecting it. Uh, I was expecting something that felt more like a beta for some reason, but it's really slick. The, uh, the notifications pane here, it notifies you up on the top in the status bar there for all kinds of stuff. When you have new email, when you have new SMS, MMS messages, if you're logged into IM, when you get a new IM, you get a notification. If you're downloading a song from Amazon when it's done, when it's downloading and when it's done, it tells you. You're downloading something from the Android market, an application, same thing. Um, it just, it tells you stuff and you flick it down and then you can just hit, you know, I can tap right there on my new email thing and it takes me straight to my email, which is great. Um, it, uh, it just, it works really well. It's very slick. There are little nifty things on it. You know, if I open the keyboard up, you can see it in widescreen mode. Uh, there are just neat little things here like, you know, the long touch system where um, you touch and hold and it gives you a little buzz and then you can move stuff around. Like that just works very well. It's really intuitive. Uh, the system here with the three home screen setup is just kind of neat. And if you notice in the background, my wallpaper is like moving with me, it's panning over the picture, which is just a cool little feature. Um, basically, you know, they, like I said, we'll get into more detail the specifics of different things in the other videos and the written review on the site and everything, but it's kind of, it's almost like the anti-iPhone, and, and this isn't a comparison video, but the best way to say it is that why it's a game changer, iPhone was a game changer because it introduced this really high quality touch screen and this level of usability for a device that does so many things beyond phone calls, a level of usability that we hadn't seen on other phones. But with Apple, like with all Apple products, you're locked into their system. 
you're locked into their firmware updates, you're locked into them controlling the application store with you know, rules that aren't always transparent to people, you're locked into their iTunes ecosystem for DRM protected music and videos. I mean, you can sideload your own stuff onto it, but Apple's got you know, their way of doing things and they're very good at it. The Android is much more about, it's an open platform, and just the phone kind of reflects that, and just the way you can customize it in so many different ways, um, it's really slick. This isn't the device that I want, to be frank. I want something that's thinner, I want something that has a headphone jack, you know, blah, 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 blah. Um, and it definitely has, you know, like I said, a, a bunch of things that I'm not crazy about. The keyboard, for me, is too flush mounted. It's definitely usable and I like the way it's spaced and everything, but there's not a whole lot of action. There's not a whole lot of travel on the keys, and so I got a little bit of thumb fatigue using it. Also, having the little chin in the way while you're typing, for me at least, is a little bit of a, of a pain. It, it's offset fairly well. You know, the keypad is kind of roughly centered between the chin and the little border here, but still, having the chin there, I, I'm not so crazy about. Um, there's no, like I said, headphone jack, there's no stereo Bluetooth out of the gate. There's no video player that's installed on the phone out of the gate. Uh, Amazon downloads are only over Wi-Fi, not over 3G. Um, you know, there's lots of other stuff with it, but there's so much that it does well, and it's so fun to play with the Android platform, and it's very responsive on this device, that it just makes me really, you could get this phone and overcome its shortcomings just because you're psyched to play with Android, and I'm sure there'll be a slew of new applications coming out soon. Um, you could also, I know I'm supposed to set it to not go off in the videos, but this isn't a review, it's just an you know, a, a overall review, not a specific review. Anyway, um, or you could wait and see what the next Android devices will bring. It's a game changer because it's the beginning of Android and I think it's going to be huge. The, uh, the synchronization with your Google, you have to you know, sign in with a Google Gmail account and everything, but if you want to use Google and you want to have your stuff in the cloud, the synchronization, the integration with Google, with Gmail, with Calendar, with Contacts, it's all very slick, it works really well. Uh, the 3G so far has been good. The web browser is excellent. I'd put it up there with iPhone and with Opera Mobile. Uh, Opera Mobile on the Touch Diamond is excellent. I'd put this right up there with them, except the nice thing about this is not just the touch screen and the keyboard, you've got the track wheel, which makes it very easy to hone in on those little links on web pages that can sometimes be a pain to get to with only a touch screen. It's finger friendly, there's no stylus included. Um, there will be a, US, a USB to audio adapter so you can plug regular headphones in. It comes with USB headphones. We should see a stereo Bluetooth solution rolled out before too long. Uh, there's no video player installed. There's a beta video player available for free in the Android market. The YouTube client is very slick. Uh, what can I tell you? You know, check out the in-depth reviews, the video reviews, and the written reviews. But, uh, you know, there's no video capture on the camera either. There's three megapixel camera, autofocus, photo sharing is easy, uh, but no video capture right now, no flash either. So, again, this is the beginning of something that I think is going to be really big. Google doesn't mess around. They want you on the internet. They want you using their services. And they've made a really nice piece of software, in my opinion. Uh, that runs quite well on this device. Even though for me it's not the perfect device, it gets a big thumbs up because it does what it does so well. The touch screen is great. The trackball works well. Uh, voice quality is quite good. T-Mobile's new 3G network in general works well for me. I'm in the East Bay area of Northern California near San Francisco. Uh, it's kind of, you know, in different places at different times. First time I used it was in a place I don't usually go to in Oakland and uh, it was spectacular. The speeds were really fast, web browsing was great. Since then, at my home and at my office, the speeds have been a little slower. We'll do some you know, actual tests, we'll post them on the website, we'll do some comparisons, that kind of thing. Uh, speaking of comparisons, just real quick, you can get an idea of the size. Here's the Apple iPhone, and um, you know, in terms of height and width, roughly similar, a little narrower than the iPhone, but uh, it's much thicker than iPhone. You know, noticeably thicker. Weight-wise, a little bit heavier as well. And because it's, uh, you know, narrower and thicker, the weight feels more concentrated. Here's the Touch Diamond. So you can compare with the Touch Diamond. It's definitely bigger than Touch Diamond. This is the Sprint version, the CDMA version. And thickness-wise, you know, kind of roughly the same. The screen, as you can see, is definitely bigger. Here's a BlackBerry, BlackBerry Curve. And you can see uh, the, H the G1 has a bigger screen, and uh, it's overall taller. 
uh, it's narrower. Thickness wise, it's a little bit thicker. But then, you know, when you pop out the keyboard, um, you have the advantage of a much larger screen with a full keyboard. The keyboard and the trackball uh, on the, eight, the, G1, the G1, rather, not quite as good as the BlackBerry. The track, trackball's good, it's just a little bit smaller. The keyboard, not as good as the keyboard on BlackBerry Curve, for my money, anyway. Uh, one more comparison, here's the uh, LG Voyager. So, kind of roughly the same size and shape as the Voyager. I think it's a little bit wider, not about the same as the Voyager. And thickness-wise, about the same. The Voyager's definitely a little bit lighter. The Voyager feels more plasticky than the G1. The display on the G1 is definitely bigger. And then, if we open them up, you can see the keyboard on the Voyager is definitely bigger. So, there you go. Um, again, all in all, thumbs up. I think it's a very, very interesting device. It's going to be a game changer in terms of bringing Android out, bringing some attention back to T-Mobile, possibly. And, uh, you know, very, looking, very much looking forward to seeing what applications get released for this and also what the next Android devices hold, because I know we're going to see some more, some different form factors, that kind of thing, um, that'll hopefully address some of the... It's not even concerns, it's just wants, you know, people like me who want specific things from their phones. But again, it's the T-Mobile G1 with Google from HTC, launch price $179 with a two-year contract. This is the bronze version, also available in black. Uh, officially October 22nd, it's available. We're hearing that pre-orders have started shipping. They might be out as soon as October 17th, maybe even. I don't know. Uh, but there you go. Much, much more on this device on phonedog.com. We'll be doing all kinds of stuff with it. You can email in questions. We're going to try to set up some kind of a live webcast thing. We're having some technical things getting that started. But maybe over on the Facebook page so uh, we can do a Q&A and, you know, you can ask me questions, tell you what I think of it. But, uh, yeah, very cool. The G1, phonedog.com. Thanks for watching. Check out all the other videos for a much more in-depth look at the G1.